the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. I, this is deep today. I really, I'm telling you, they deep every day, really, right? Every Sunday, right? But this is deep. This one is probably the most important message that was ever discussed uh, that we went over today, or I went over today. And I wanted to share with you, and I, I just want to encourage you to listen to these studies this week um, because it matters to you personally concerning the direction you should take in life, concerning the Word of God. And the direction should always be toward Christ, toward Yeshua, toward Jesus. You know, the scripture says in John 14, 6, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that means you don't go by the color of your skin. You don't go by your political affiliation. You don't go by your nationality. You don't go by what country you're in. You don't go by the country where you came from. You go by Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. But if you can keep that in mind, you can make a big difference. So we're going to go and talk about the study real quick. This is the introduction. And, and one of the things I want to do is make sure you know this is what we talked about today. This is a good question, too. It's like the fact is, and, and I like it, and I think it makes sense. It's a question. And I'm going to answer the question at the same time. Do Christians believe we are not accountable to God, but to man? And the scripture I'm using is Romans 14, 12, Jeremiah 17, 10, and Galatians 1, 6 through 10. I'm going to focus on the foundation scriptures in Romans 14, 6 through 12 that I'm going to talk about. But the point is this. Do Christians, because that's why that's what I am. I'm a believer in Christ, Christ Jesus. He's my Lord and personal Savior. So I'm asking a question as a fellow Christian to other Christians, right? I'm gonna answer the question in a second. But what I'm saying is, do Christians believe we are not accountable to God but to man? The answer is that we are accountable to God, not to man. And but your actions must line up with that statement, right? Because what people see. And let me get this up. Come off the screen right here. What people see is in most cases, it seems like people move based on the will or preference of your fellow man. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a believer in Christ. But you do the thing that is, you do contrary to the word of God. And therefore, you act like you're not accountable to God. Now make sure you get this, this foundational script I was using is in Romans, like I was telling you earlier, in Romans 7. And I want to make sure we cover those real quick. In Romans 7, it says, let me make sure I get it up there for you. I know I got to talk too long. Romans 14, side is 7 to 12. For none of us live unto himself. And no man dies to himself. For whether we live, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I say it again. Every one of us should give an account of himself to God. That preacher, that minister should give an account of himself to God. And if he's sitting there endorsing you to do bad things, you know, I have one of my friends sit there and say, 
I want to be able to talk about and preach about all kinds of things. And then I, some of the things, I don't want the, the system to discriminate me and tell me I can't preach about the Bible. You know, the, if you're teaching, if you're a Christian, you're teaching about preaching the good news. And people should walk out being able to go preach the good news. If people walk out and sit there and go and beat somebody up because of this exploitation or something else, if people go out there and go and list people because of the color of skin, you didn't preach the good news. Because that, you obviously didn't preach the good news. You didn't preach that they were supposed to love one another. You preached that they were supposed to be the wrath of God. That's not God. That's not the will of God. We should not be going around crucifying anybody. We should not be beating up anybody. We should be loving everybody. And if you feel that that's not justified, but you feel that the preaching the gospel is not enough, then you go ahead and be something else, but you're not preaching the gospel. And the Bible says if you preach any other gospel, you are a curse. You think about that. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to encourage other people to come to Christ. We're supposed to sit there and say that come as you are because the only person who can clean you is Him. We're supposed to sit there and say the only way I can be holy is through Him. The only way I can be righteous is through Him. Remember that. That's what we're talking about today. So I hope you enjoyed this study. I hope you learned the session coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share what you learned to somebody else. Cause that's really what matters. You can subscribe all you want, leave a comment all you want. I don't care, I wanna hear what scripture, but I want you, if you're gonna comment, comment based on the scriptures. Because that's what matters. But the bottom line is this, we all are giving account to God. So I hope you enjoyed the session coming up. Well, I'm going to break them down into A, B, C, D, whatever the cup takes. And then I'm going to go ahead and send these out daily. But I want you to remember that Yeshua is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. And do His will. That's all that matters. Enjoy the session. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> One of the scriptures leading to salvation for most of us. This is, a, this is part of the, the mother of all scriptures that talk about salvation. This is Romans 10, 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, this is coming out of your mouth, the Lord Jesus, or Yeshua, Yeshua is a Hebrew name. Lord means that I'm kicking myself off the throne of my life. I'm kicking my political party. I'm kicking my friend and anybody else off the throne of my life. I'm not talking about kicking them out of your life. But what's on the throne of your life? What is sitting on the throne of your life? You confess that he's sitting on the throne of your life. Is what matters. And you believe in thy heart and thy spirit, not in thy head. That God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Please listen to that. If you confess with your mouth the Lord, meaning he's Lord of your life, on the throne of your life, he is the ruler, he is the leader, he is the director, the Holy Spirit is directing you, and you believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For, verse 10, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and when the mouth of confession is made into salvation, what's in your heart? Who's Lord of your life? Because we already read scriptures, didn't we? We read the six things God hate. We read the Ten Commandments. <laughs> who, who, which, which part? Who's Lord in your life? And here's a, just a kicker right here in Matthew 7 21. This is what we're going to nail it and bring it home. It says right here. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. Are you, are you, are you hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth? Have you heard the scriptures we talked about so far? Because all those things tie together. Remember, he who does the will of my Father in heaven lines up with the daily prayer. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. His word, his daily bread is his word. His will is his word. So if you confess with your mouth that he's Lord, then you're doing his will. 
If you don't go and do His will, you're not accountable to other people, you're accountable to Him. If you want to be a believer, come on, saints. He said only those who do the will of the Father in heaven. You can call yourself a Christian all day. You can sit there and call Lord, Lord all day. But if you don't have it in your heart, and if you don't try to apply his word, his will in your day, every day, think about it. He said many were saying that day uh, to me. When it was saying to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that day? You know, when I sat there and lynched that person, when I sit there and tried to hurt that person, have we not prophesied that name? Have we not cast out devils in that name? You know, that's when I listened at first. I thought I was lynching a devil. Hmm. You know, when I discriminated against that person, I thought I was discriminating against a devil. You know, when I laughed into that person, planted seeds of destruction, of this discord among those people, did, shed into the blood, I thought I was doing wonderful works. I thought I was putting out the devil. And in that name, the many wonderful works, all that discrimination, all that, all that stuff that my, my friends, my, my body, my country. <laughs> oh Lord, I did all those wonderful works, Lord. And look what He said. Then I will confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that workers in equity. Now that's. Why? And that's why I think all the scripture we said up to this point is doing the will of God. That's why I want you to, I encourage you to do the Lord's Prayer today to remind you of the Word of God and the will of God. The Bible is a reflection of the will of God. It's a mirror for you to look at. It's a mirror for me to look at. I'm not trying to say, I'm going to hold accountable God just like you. And I'm trying to do the best I can. But I'm not sitting there trying to practice lawlessness. I'm not trying to practice iniquity. I'm trying to move away from those things that is not pleasing to the sight of God. And I hope you're doing the same thing too. You, we are held accountable to God. Those who are not saved are still held and be accountable to God. Those, you know, different between those who are not believers and non believers, you are have an advocate called Christ. Christ says that if you call me Lord and do my will and keep my commandments, that means you love me, I know you. If you're conforming daily, seeking to conform to his image daily. Seeking to conform to the image of his God's dear son daily. You, they might ask you, but you look, let me tell you something. It's not about what people think, it's what he thinks. And that's what makes a difference. You don't need to sit and try to lie to people and impress people. You come to God as you are. You may have all kinds of issues, and God knows you have all kinds of issues, but you're working sincerely toward working on those issues. I mean, you got strongholds in your life, and a lot of the strongholds may hold you back. We all got different times of strongholds. But we got to sit there and sit there and say, Lord, let that will be done. And we continue to do that every day. And maybe as we keep doing that, and keep applying that, maybe we'll get out of the thing that's sin that's set before us. Because we're doing the will of God. Amen. Man, this is good scripture. These are good things you need to look at. And, you, and, and then, matter of fact, just leave with this understanding that God's will must be done in my life because I am accountable to him, not man. I don't need the approval of man. I don't need the endorsement of man because their endorsement means nothing. They're just like filthy rags. Their righteousness is just like filthy rags. Your righteousness is like filthy rags. But the will of God, that is where you want to come from. That's where you want to wake up every day. So then say, let that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what you want to do when you go to sleep at night. Let that will be done as it is in earth as it is in heaven. I seek to do your will. And I hide in the secret place of you. Man, I don't know about you, but I like these scriptures. I mean, just, it's just confident to know I'm held accountable to God. And therefore, I make my decisions and, and direction. And, do, and I make mistakes. I made mistakes and I go to him. I don't need to go to you. I don't need people to sit there and say, well, well, you, you Mr. Preacher Man and you did that. 
You curse. You slip. What am I saying? Huh? Huh? Well, let me take it to God. You want to take God to? You want to advocate for me? You want to pray for me? Or you want to condemn me? You want to say I'm through? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you think. I know I got his will, his purpose in my mind. I know I'm seeking for his will. And therefore, that's why people consider to say religion was made to control people because you sit there and do what the people tell you to do instead of doing the will of God. <laughs> Almost like Shaq, like Meshach and Abednego. You sit there and they wanted him, all they wanted them to do is, and that's not right, they wanted them to do is bow down to, to an image. And they said, no. And they said, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And, and they said, our God can deliver us from the fire. But if not, we still not going to bow down and worship you. And that's one of the things I need to talk. That's what I'm trying to tell about you today. Is, are you bowing down to the will or pressure of other people? Or political parties or, or denominations or ministries? Or are you bowing down to the will of God? Who is your Lord? Is Christ Lord or your color of your skin or your political body or your family or your friends? Who's Lord? You know, it'd be interesting. I wish I could cover so many examples in the scriptures, but they all keep pointing back to the same thing. You know, King Saul lost his kingdom because he was following the will of people instead of the will of God. Some of you call yourself Christians, but you don't, he's not Lord in your life. If he's not Lord in your life, then you're not Christian. Because he's not Lord. I mean, that's what the Bible says. You know, when they tell you the door of the church are open, they say this, that you we pointing toward Christ. And he's Lord in your life. Let his will be done. Even though I'm in the Lord's Prayer, we talk about the fact is that his will, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> so we want to focus on is, is to talk about the fact is that you are accountable to God, not man. It's not the reverse. The question is, do we believe we're not accountable to God, but to man? And the answer is, we're accountable to God, not man. Who are you accountable for? That's something you have to personally assess for yourself. And you do that assessment based on the will of God, based on the word of God. Stop being controlled by people. Because that's what turns other people off because they see you doing something contrary to the teaching of Christ. You're not the weapon of Christ. You're not the wrath of Christ or the wrath of God. You are not the instrument of that. You were called, we were called to preach the gospel. We were told, we were commanded to love one another. That's the will of God. You can sit there and I know, hey man, politics, I'm going to go by my politics. Then you go by your politics because you know what? Your politics, your your color, your skin, or anything else will not be what answers to God. You will be. And you can, you can, I guess you figure you can go before God and tell him, Lord, I was doing the will of people, and they were doing the will of your, you, right? What did my word say? He's gonna, you know, I mean, you're gonna know. What did the word say? <laughs> what did the word say when you sat there and sat there and lied and gave false witness to other people? What did the word say when you sit there and kill somebody? Huh? What did the word say? When you manipulated, when you sit there and did things that just that's to harm to your fellow man or your neighbor. What does the word say? And that's what I want to be able to say. Do what Jesus did when you make decisions. And stop doing it what people do. And stop basing our faith based on the actions of people, but you most of make your decision based on the word of God. Remember it says faith comes by here and hearing what the word of God. So if faith comes by here and hearing the word of God, then your faith should be based on the word of God, not based on the word of man or the actions of people. So I'm sorry for those people that sit there and see us acting like a fool. Let me tell you something. A tree is nobody's fruit. And that's the best way I can tell you. When you look at a person and somebody calls themselves a Christian, look at the fruits that they bear. It'll tell you who they are. If, if you don't know what the will, especially if you don't know the will of God, which is not expect you to know the will of God, but you still should know that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit we're talking about? Found in Galatians 5, 23, 22 again. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. If they show these fruit, these characteristics of the fruits of the Spirit, you're talking to a Christian. But if they don't show love, 
If, if you're not getting love from them, you ain't talking to a Christian. You're talking to something else. You're talking to something that calls itself a Christian. You're talking to something that's a mool of sheep clothes. That's what you're talking to. Because even that wolf, just like that sheep, will give an account to God. And I guarantee you, he's going to base on what he told us to do in the word of God. Not that that lying stuff that has been done since what, since the crusade. That lying stuff that was accepted in, in the slave trade. That lying stuff that was accepted in the Jim Crow laws and all that stuff. You, you know that is not the will of God. And those people that sat down and did those things and they shame. And you know, bad thing about it, someone's so ashamed today. Ashamed. That's why books and everything has been abandoned because abandoned because they are ashamed for the atrocities that were done. And they call themselves Christians. But they're really so-called Christians. Because a tree is known by its fruit. So the study today is the fact is that we all give an account of ourselves to God. And so leave this one thing, if nothing else. What would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? Think that way as you move through life. Okay? <laughs> and don't worry about whether people approve of where you are where you are or not. You are a child of God because it's the will of God. Remember we put that in Second Timothy? He will for all men to be saved and come to the full knowledge of the truth of God. I'm putting these things out. I'm talking even longer because I'm trying to make sure you get the word of God. Because it's the word of God that matters, not me. But I'm guaranteeing you if some preacher or some Christian sit there and say, you are accountable to me. And I'm going to judge you. I'm going to assess whether you believe or not. You need to sit there and say, you, I'm not accountable to you, so I don't matter whether you believe I'm a Christian or not. I don't need you to sit there and try to tell me that I'm, I can make an assessment myself. I'm not even going to make an assessment myself. I'm going to sit there and say, I'm a child of God because of him. And I'm trying to do his will. And you don't sit there and come tell me with some small, thin layer, one thin slice of Christianity, and to hold me accountable, because I'm not going to be accountable to you. I'm accountable to God. Stop letting people sit there and run people off away from the church because you, they didn't, you didn't meet their criteria. You need to meet their criteria. You need to meet God's criteria. You remember Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners of repentance. So he's seeking you. He's seeking me. Those people sit there act like they never sin. Those people act like they don't sin. You need to sit there and say, get behind me, Satan. You're mindful of the things of man instead of the things of God. And don't sit there and tell me you want to give me one piece of God's will and hold me accountable for it. And you don't hold the rest of the stuff in life that you're accountable for. Get a light. You pray for me. You have mercy for me. You don't sit there and condemn me because you have not the authority to do so. You should encourage me to do right, but you don't sit there and try to tell me that I'm supposed to think the way you think. Doing that, running so many people away from Christ, running so many people from church. You got some people said to say, how can you be a Democrat if you're a Christian? How can you be a Christian if you're a Republican? Get a life. You can be a Christian. You call yourself a Christian. You can be affiliated with any party you want. The question is, as long as you say that, his will is above their will, their platform, your platform, your will. I am not being held accountable because of you. I will take those issues, those platforms, those things to God. And on top of this, and we will over this, I am not an instrument of God. I'm not a judge. I don't judge people whether they can go to heaven or hell. I don't judge that. I'm just telling you, you need to be accountable to God. And if you feel comfortable with what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing with your bad self. But I know that I'm accountable to God. And you need to make sure you do that. When you confront people, they can confront you. You say, pray for me. That's the thing I gotta work on. But I hope you're praying for yourself as well. And I hope you line up with his will as well. Because you know what? You come in the way you want to, but you can give account to God. And one of the things you got to worry about is if you sit there and condemn me, if you sit there and come against me, and especially if you're trying to use physical force against me, you're going to be accountable to God. Do what you do. You call what you want to call it. Amen. Man, I, I mean... <laughs>
I'm going to go ahead and reflect on these scriptures again. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put these videos out. And I, and, I, and I hope that we all just study, show ourselves approved and just recognize we're accountable to God. What would Yeshua do when you make decisions? And if you line up with that, I think you're going to make some right decisions. I'm going to make perfect because no one's perfect. I ain't perfect. And I ain't said I am perfect. But I know what? I know nobody out there. I know. You know. None of them are perfect. None of them are holy. But they can be holy in Christ. You can't be holy outside of Christ. You can't be holy outside of your own preference. Your own righteousness. You're not going to be holy. You're only going to be holy because of Him. You're going to be righteous because of Him. That's what the scriptures say. All right? All right. God bless you. Hope you have a great week. And I'll see you when I see you. I'm going to go ahead and do my introduction uh, for these tapes. You know, I'll break them down into segments, right? I'll break them down to from A, B, and C, try to do 20 to 30 minutes, you know, mostly, uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability. And and then I sit them and put those out, hopefully on a daily basis. I send out texts. I send out like, a, like today, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But the uh, YouTube and... Uh, Facebook and Twitter, they get it every day. You know, hey, you gotta reach people the best way you can, right? It's about the word of God. Preach the gospel. That's what we call us to do. So I'm gonna preach it. I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna discuss it. And I hope you do the same. Learn what you learn. Throw out what's not important, but don't throw out the will of God. And share, man. We need to we we let's share the scriptures. All right. And don't forget to subscribe. Amen. All right, God bless you. I'll see you I see you. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, do my introduction for my videotapes uh, from this session today. All right? Stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.